Hey everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Katie B and we are here doing Lessons in Love Raid. And now 2016, no more excuses, we are on our way. The parties are over, we have done the champagne toast, we had the parade, we had our fun. But maybe you're looking for something more. And if that's the case, then it's time for an upgrade. I always call it. All of us could use an upgrade. If you're gonna upgrade your phone, you're gonna upgrade your laptop, you're gonna upgrade your car. Well, guess what? It is time to upgrade your life. I upgraded myself once before. I feel like once I started my journey, I said I called it Kate 2.0. And I might have had version 2.5, 2.8, but I'm ready as well. I want to be Kate 3.0, brand spanking new. Because while I'm here to share with you my lessons and to connect with you and hopefully help you reach your own goals, the love that I give to you will come right back to me and it helps me to get myself to the next level as well. You want more happiness in your life? Yes! Do you want more joy in Yes! Yeah. Do you want more love in your life? Yep. Do you want more prosperity and wealth? Yes. Do you want abundance? Oh yeah. Do you want clarity? See. Do you want more fulfillment? Do you want more time? Yeah, I can use some time. Do you want more happiness? Yes. The answer is yes, yes. Are you ready to stop sipping the haterade and start sipping the loverade? Ready! <laughs> Do you want more Katie B in your life? Katie who? <laughs> that crazy redhead, he's always talking about loverade. She's on YouTube talking about loverade. All the time. Oh! Yes. Hello? Hello. It's me. Oh, it's for you. It's your new, amazing, wonderful, exciting life calling. It's new she filled up with love. Here, take it for you. I'll go over here. You guys can talk. You guys can talk. All right, here we go. Let the upgrade commence. So let's open your heart, open your mind, and let's let the miracles begin. I mentioned having a lot of KDB in your life because this channel is going to be a lot about me. I think that we teach best through sharing our own stories. So while there will be a lot of lessons and a lot of question to answer advice and lots of tips and tricks I want to share everything that, with you that I've learned, I also really want to share my life with you. Because that's what I find the most interesting from the teachers that I follow. I always want to know about where they live and what they wear and what they eat and who their friends are and how they spend their time. I don't know. I just always find that interesting. Especially with people on YouTube, you know, I might be following um, fitness girl or a beauty blogger and sometimes my favorite videos are ones where like they might not even be doing a makeup tutorial. Now granted, I go there for that and that's how I learn to put on my face. <laughs> but once I've done all of that, the thing that keeps me going back to a certain person is their story and that's what I'd like to hear. So hopefully you will be open and entertained by my story. Um, I wanted to start off the discussion about the law of attraction because that's kind of how I started my journey. I was raised Catholic Christian with a Catholic school my whole life. I just, when I got older, I just kind of was very open to all religions. So if you ask me to define myself, I always say love is my religion. I think I briefly mentioned that I used to be a professional dancer. I danced at the nightclubs in Philadelphia and big live events, as well as I co-hosted a program for Comcast On Demand um, with actually one of my friends for a couple seasons, but I would say the biggest part of my life was I was a NBA dancer for the Philadelphia 76ers for five years. Um, 
it is a huge part of who I am. Once a Sixer dancer, always a Sixer dancer, sort of. It was an amazing experience. I loved performing. I loved my family. It's kind of like a sisterhood. Um, very good friends with a lot of my former dancers. And one of those really cool experiences that I got to have as a Sixers dancer was to go to this NBA dance convention that they had every year. So girls from different teams from all over the country met. You got to meet them. There's amazing choreographers to bring you back numbers back to your team. A lot of people don't realize you know, there's 44 home games and we've danced two, three, four times a game. So that's a lot of choreography needed for a season, unlike a football season where they only have like eight games. So um, our director would choreograph, some of the dancers would get an opportunity to choreograph. Sometimes we would bring in local choreographers or hire other people. But one of the things you did was go to this convention, learn choreography, and bring it back. And the reason that this is all relevant is because the year I happened to go, the directors of this convention had just read The Secret. And I don't know if it had just come out or maybe it was just added to Oprah's book club or like whatever it was, there was a lot of energy around it. So they spoke a lot about it. And this weekend was very empowering. It was very girl power. It was very exciting. There was a lot of really good energy run, you know, running around. And they spoke about this book and I was like, what are they talking about? Like, what is The Secret? Like, I don't understand. I kind of just didn't pay that much attention, but my friend was very into it. And I don't know if she had already read it or got it, but then, so we came home and it resonated with me. It was calling to me, so I bought it. And um, I, I mentioned this before, and I will mention a lot of other books and a lot of other places to go for inspiration. This just happened to be my starting point. First major concept, or I guess the concept that what they call the secret in this book is the law of attraction. And there's a lot of information about it, but what you need to know about the law of attraction is like attracts like, okay? Sounds really simple. If you put out positive energy, you get positive things in return. If you put out negative energy, you get negative things in return. Some people can call that just karma. Scientific evidence is really interesting about it because we're all walking around this world and we are all just made of molecules. Let's get geeky for a minute. So we're all made of molecules. Energy is actually a really powerful thing. I think I talked in my last video about vibrating on a higher level and energy, and it can all sound very flighty and very granola and very like a flower child. But there's a lot of scientific research showing this, which I found so interesting because when I started reading about the principles, I was applying a lot of them in my life already, but not realizing that there was actual evidence that backed it up. So an instance where I could can even say that is one of the things that's really great about the law of attraction and using it to manifest, which is something that we will talk about in another video because I know you guys are excited. You guys want to manifest everything that you want in your life for 2016. So we can talk about manifesting and, and how you do that and how to bring about all the things that you like, um, or all the things that you want, all the things that you desire into your life. But I thought it was interesting because like, so I read this book and I realized like I had actually already applied a lot of these principles. One of the things that you can do to manifest, I'll briefly touch on, is just using your imagination and visualizing that you, visualizing and almost pretending that you already have something. So going back to my Sixers experience, when I had originally auditioned for the Sixers, I was straight out of college and I really didn't think I was gonna make it. I had other friends that were amazing dancers who had tried out and hadn't made it. My goal was to go to the audition, to learn the process, and to practice really hard and to come back the next year. Most people don't know that the audition process is a month long process, maybe even a little bit more, where you go to the first day of auditions, they make several cuts, and then for the month you curse up for this big grand public finale, and so it's an emotional roller coaster the entire time. So I went in kind of unsure. My parents, on a whole nother note, were like very surprised because they always thought I was very shy. Meanwhile, like I said, my imagination runs rapid. And in my bedroom, I was a super mega star, like putting on concerts and doing book tours and all sorts of things that my parents didn't know because I was kind of shy. And I kept it inside until I was much older. So anyway, so we get into the audition process and I kind of just start wanting it really badly. And I get really excited about it. And I feel like I found, I'm like, this is my, this is where I belong. 
and I started to believe in it. I started to visualize myself making the team. I started to visualize myself on the court. I started to visualize myself going to practices. I even so much would like run around the house kind of feeling like, ooh, I'm a Sixers dancer. Like, ooh, like, like I can't believe I'm a Sixers dancer. Like I would do these things and it sounds really silly and it really was until I found out that this is one of the ways that you can manifest things to believe, to be grateful, to be thankful for something before you even have it. I so much as visualized the call from the coach the day after the final auditions. I would think about it constantly. I would think about her calling me and saying, Kate, we'd like you to be a Sixers dancer. And then I would visualize my inner celebration, me dancing around the house and being like, ah, I'm a Sixers dancer. Something that you take for granted after you've been doing it for, for five years. But can I say this all to you because it really solidified it for me. And I'm sure that you can think of experiences in your life that you may have manifested without really realizing you were doing it. Like something that you really visualized, you put your heart and soul into, you concentrated on, and then somehow you brought that into your life. I'm sure you can think of something. So I had this very real experience of reading this, and that, that's just one example of something I had sort of manifested and I had done all these principles not really realizing I had done it and not really realizing the science behind it. The key is you have to be mindful. You have to be conscious. You have to be living in the present moment to realize you're even manifesting things. I sat down on the couch on New Year's Day and talked about my good friend Christian Crosby and how much I missed him and told my roommate who's never met him, he's such a great person, I can't wait for you to meet him. And he called me 10 minutes later. I'm sure you guys have had experiences like that. We hadn't talked in a long time, so it wasn't a natural thing for him, not like your mom who might call you every day. It's like, oh yeah, she called, surprise, surprise. I don't like to overly coincidence things. I sometimes think that people are like, oh, it's a sign. Oh, you know, sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. It's, it's really not for me to tell you. Um, it's for you to figure out in your life like what feels authentic and what doesn't. So like I said, the law of attraction, like attracts like, and I'm sure that you had had experiences where you felt this is true. When you are having the terrible, horrible, no good, very bad day, um, and you start to list all the reasons that you woke up, and then you stubbed your toe, and then you spilled your coffee, and then the guy cut you off in the car, and then your boss yelled at you when you got to work, and then you forgot your lunch, and it is so easy once you get that momentum and you get that spiral to just like kind of lose it and totally become an Eeyore, and you have this cloud of rain that like nothing, even if something nice happens to you, you're not gonna notice it because your mind is not even paying attention, and you just keep attracting more and more things to add to your list, but if you can switch your mindset, do something positive, think one positive thought to interrupt that, that momentum that's going on, be grateful for one thing, um, do something that brings you joy or happiness, or literally try and count your blessings, I think is a beautiful saying because we so often sit here and we count our grievances, but we don't take the time to count our, our blessings. So when things are going wrong, like try and stop yourself and think for a minute and switch that energy back around so that we can vibrate up here. I, I actually have, I'm gonna share with you, I do own The Secret. I mean, I have a, a huge collection, I said, of many things that I share with you. I'm just happy to start here. Um, I own a copy of The Secret, but I lent it to a good friend who will not be ma named, who has had it for a very long time and hasn't read it yet. I probably should have gotten her the DVD. Totally calling her out. Kate Coyne, read the freaking book. Read it. Or watch the movie and give me the book back. Um, Rhonda Bine, who is the author, also has put out many other successful books. This is The Power, this was the next one. I think there's maybe another one called The Love. This one's called The Magic. It's more of like a work book. I'm not gonna lie to you. I haven't worked through this book. I've been doing May Cause Miracles and a few other lessons. Workbooks are hard because I like to do them and I have too many of them. But they basically say the same thing. Um, the reason that I continue to read these books, even though I'm telling you that they all kind of say the same thing, is you need things to, you, you always need to refresh yourself, and that's why I talk about the upgrade. You always need to remind yourself. You, you get really excited when these things start to happen, and it starts to feel like there's miracles and magic happening in your life. And somewhere along the way, you just get stuck in your daily life again. You get stuck in traffic, you get bogged down with work, you get tired and you kind of forget to be thankful or to be mindful or to, to focus on happiness. And you can say you're not happy, but happiness is a choice and you have to choose that. You have to choose happiness every day. 
You can't wait for happiness to come to you. You have to decide, you have to put your mind to the fact that happiness is going to be a priority in life. And once you make it a priority in your life, it will come to you more easily. I want you to get that feeling. And I want you to get greedy for it. Bill Murray does this really great monologue at the end of Scrooge that my dad had pointed out to me years ago and it's after he's been visited by the ghosts and you know now he wants to live this new more positive happy fulfilled life and he says once you have that feeling you will want it every day of your life and you will get greedy for it and I want you to get greedy for it once you get greedy for the love aid, I want you to get so excited about it and see so many results and see how your life starts to come together in the most magical ways that yeah, you could do all these other things. You could gossip and you could yell at that guy who took your parking spot. And you, you could make all your complaints about the things that you don't have and the things that are happening bad to you and be playing the victim. You could do all those things, but you're not gonna want to. Because this feeling is gonna feel so good and you're gonna want it every day of your life. But this is your homework for day one. We'll call this day one, even though we've done a couple other videos of getting to know me a little bit. But this is your homework. I want you to choose happiness for five minutes today. I'm not saying you have to be happy all day, because you don't, because you're not going to be. I don't know if anybody's happy all day, every day. I really don't think they are. Be happy now. Maybe this video is your moment of happiness. That would be super great. Some other advice, call a friend. Call a family member, someone who makes you laugh really hard. Put on a TV show that makes you laugh okay if you're into murders you know, or scary movies like that's a great but no that's not part of this assignment put on something that makes you laugh a movie a sitcom whatever put on a song not an angry song maybe that's what you gotta do to get motivated at the gym put on a song that gives you butterflies in your stomach that makes you want to dance around your house in your underwear put that song on don't have to dance in your underwear unless you want to then you can because it's fun Spend some time with a child. Talking to children can really elevate your happiness. Jump on your bed, go for a bike ride, whatever it is, find something. And be conscious in that moment. And don't take that moment for granted. Say, okay, this is my moment of happiness today. There's so many things that we're gonna do, so many different practices, so many different ways to find joy and happiness and peace and love and all these things in our life. But number one goal is to vibrate on a higher level. You do that when you're being nice to yourself. You do that when you're being nice to others. You do that when you hear a song you like or watch a TV show or all these other things. We want to take it wherever we are now. We want to upgrade. We want to take that level and whether it's through a kind word, a kind deed, being kind to yourself, learning something new, we're going to elevate. Elevate in 2016. So take that moment today. Five minutes of happiness conscious happiness that you are choosing for yourself and comment down below let me know what you did i would love for you guys to inspire each other i could use some more inspiration because i'm trying to upgrade myself as well so comment below like this video and subscribe if you want to continue lessons with love raid with kdb because i'm here for you and i am ready to upgrade you in 2016 and i am ready to be kdb 3.0 <laughs> forget to be taking some sips of love raid today. Ah, it's so refreshing. It's so nice. This is like big love. Like, like super duper love. It's like a really big cup. Like look, it's like as big as my face. Oh, why are you mad? You sipping on hand right here. Put the hand right down. I have some love for you. It's right here. I will share. I mean, I don't want to share because it tastes good. Sharon is Karen. Just over here, mind my business. It's a big cup. There's, there's lots of room. There's, there's plenty. Plenty to go around. The champagne taste. Blah. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, hey. There we go. We're gonna shiny per use.
me know what else you would like to see on this channel. What do you want to know about me? What do you want to see? Should we do a room tour? Do you want to know about my book collection? Do you want to see more dance moves? Do you want to see how I keep my face so shiny? Hey, mama, let me upgrade you. Yeah.